I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand symmetries in polar systems. We have three types of symmetries in a polar system. Let me sketch and show you all the three cases. So let us say uh, we'll draw three different diagrams to illustrate. Right. So uh, we'll sketch and then, then show you what we are trying to say. So as you know in a polar system we have the pole and that is the polar axis. Now if I have a point here P which is represented as R and theta then it's a reflection on the polar axis kind of a point which is given as R and minus theta so that is symmetric about the polar axis right so this point let's call this as the point P and this point as P dash then we can see that R theta and R minus theta so these are equal and they are reflection on the polar axis so we say such a situation symmetry with respect to polar axis exists right mathematically or algebraically what we are trying to do here is how do we find it we could find this symmetry uh, to say our values are same right so if f of minus theta is equals to the value of the function for theta in that case we say that the symmetry with respect to polar axis exists right that really means that if I have a curve on this side it could be reflected on the polar axis as a mirror image and we can kind of complete the whole curve right so so that could be an example where we have the polar axis symmetry right so that is one kind of symmetry which we talk about and that is uh, that the graph is symmetric about the horizontal polar axis. Got it? Now the graph could be symmetric about the the vertical y-axis also. If we have a situation which is kind of like this, let's say the point is here, and we have a mirror image on the other side, right? So, so this these two points, let's call them Q and Q dash. So these are symmetric about here the axis of symmetry is y axis right so so symmetry with respect to the line theta equals to pi by 2 so here this is represented by pi by 2 or the y axis so that is another kind of symmetry which we could have in polar system and in this case you'll observe that if this angle is theta in that case that angle should be pi minus theta correct pi minus theta or the relation algebraically will be f of pi minus theta equals to f of theta right so in that case we say that the function has symmetry about theta equals to pi by 2 or the y-axis right the third kind of symmetry which we can observe in the graphs represented by polar equations could be the symmetry about the origin itself. So if I have a point, let us say A, which is represented by R theta, so R is this length and theta is this particular angle, then it is symmetric about origin if there exists another point A dash. whose coordinate points are this point will be considered minus r uh, and and the angle will be pi theta plus pi or pi plus theta either way you can write it could be pi plus theta right so add pi to this angle right so you add pi to it plus pi right so you can write theta plus pi or this right so that is to say if the value of the function pi plus theta some most of the time it's written as theta plus pi is equals to minus f of theta right minus r in that case the function or the equation represents a function which is symmetric 
about the pole. So these are three kinds of symmetries which we understand in polar systems or which the equations can reflect. Now these symmetries help us to sketch the graph of functions, I should say sketch the polar equations on the plane. So we will actually take a few examples in sketching such equations, polar equations, and then in those equations we will see how it helps us to figure out or to find the final graph without too many calculations, right? That's the whole idea. Now it is important to understand that these are not the sufficient conditions, right? So these tests are just necessary, but they are not sufficient conditions, right? So we say these are necessary, uh, but not sufficient. Since there could be equations, for example, uh, we could have equations f of theta uh, equals to, let's say, 1 plus sine theta, which may not show us this kind of symmetry, but when we analyze it, we find that it is symmetric about the polar axis, right? So there could be some cases like that. Now we'll look into those cases. So what we're trying to give you here a caution is that if you test that f of minus theta is f theta, it means that the function will be symmetric about polar axis. But if this test is not true, it does not mean that it will not have the symmetry along the polar axis. It could still have this kind of symmetry. That's what we're trying to say here, right? We'll explore it when we sketch the graph for different polar equations. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.